All right, so now we have arrived at my favorite R package, which is called string R. This special data type that we're talking about here is, as you may have guessed, strings or character data types. There's a lot of things that you might need to do with strings in your data, and this can be very complicated. Strings are a bit annoying in how they're stored, and string R is going to make your life a little easier. So I want to remind you of something, which is that a string is just a whole bunch of characters. It's an object of character type. And so what I want you to make sure that you absolutely don't do, this is a mistake that I suspect everyone will make at some point in their career, don't confuse a string with a character vector. By which I mean don't confuse a single character object, an atomic vector, even if it has many words, with a vector of strings. So here I have my string, it's hi, my name is Bond. That is still just a single element. That's an atomic vector, it contains one object, and that object is the sentence, hi, my name is Bond. Yes, we can see that it's five words, but it's still just one object or one element in R. My vector, on the other hand, here, I have separated each word. There's now five elements, hi, my name is Bond. Those are very different things. So if I look at my string, R very helpfully puts quotes around it to kind of let you know where the beginning and end of that character data is. And if I look at my vector, we can see each individual element has quotes around it. Each of these five words is a separate string. So keep that in the back of your mind as we learn and uh, practice with the functions today. With your strings, some common things you might want to do. Well, very, very often we are searching within text for a particular pattern. I'll talk about that in a moment. Sometimes we're searching because we want to find it or count it or uh, pull it out of your data. Sometimes we actually want to remove or replace it. Maybe it's kind of like control F and control R, find and replace on your computer. And there's some other edits we might want to do to strings. For example, you might want to make the whole thing lowercase and there's some nice shortcuts for that as well. So we'll use this package string R. It installs and it loads with the tidyverse so you don't have to do anything, you already have it. And let's see how some of these functions work. Now I said that you might want to find patterns. So let's consider this vector, which is hello, my name is Bond, James Bond. We might want to do something with this pattern Bond, which we can see appears twice in this vector. It appears in the fourth element and in the fifth element. There's five functions that I find myself using most commonly with uh, this pattern matching sort of task. They involve detect, locate, match, extract, and subset. Those are five kind of similar words. It can be a little hard to predict the nuance of the difference between these five functions. So for each of these five functions I just listed, and I put them there again for you to see, tell me what is the object structure of the output? What is the data type of the output? You'll notice I'm not asking you about the input, because for each of these I've given you the input, it's a character vector. But what type and structure does the output have? And then give me just the little English words explanation. What do they do? When might you use them? So take a second and try that out now with my example. Okay, I hope you really did try it. Let's go over the answers. So this stir detect function, this is the one that I probably find myself using the most. There's a lot of other functions that it plays nice with, which you might get an example of uh, if you work through one of the exercises later today. So here's our example of the vector. Hello, my name is Bond, James Bond. And when I run stir detect on this vector, what I get back is booleans. What I get back is a boolean vector of true and false values. And what that's telling me is, is this pattern that I wanted to look for present in that element of the vector? So the first one says, hello, no bond there. My name is, no bond there. Bond, of course, matches. And James Bond, it doesn't match it exactly, but it contains that pattern bond. So we get back a true. Compare that to stir match, which is a little similar in that it's searching for that pattern, but it's going to output a slightly different data type. I hope that you saw this when you tried this out. What's the data type here? Well, let's do some snooping. So first of all, I can see from the quotes that this is a character data type right there. And I can see from the fact that my column doesn't have a name that this is probably a matrix, not a data frame. And you could check that using the str structure function, structure not string, I know they're similar. Or you could check this using the class function, any of those ones we learned. 
what you'll find is that this is a character matrix. It's got one column for that one vector, and what we have is in the first row, N A, because there was no pattern bond in that first element, second one, N A, and then for the last two, it yanks out the pattern that you were looking for and hands it back to you. Here you go, I found a bond. Here you go, I found another bond. Stir extract is a bit similar. It still gives these NAs when it doesn't find the pattern, and it yanks out the pattern and hands it to you when it does. But you'll notice this is a different object type, object structure, I should say. Hopefully you're getting a little more used to this. But we can see here that this one, although it's of character type, it only has one dimension. So same idea, but it's going to return a character vector rather than a character matrix. Stir locate, I'm putting in here, I never use stir locate. I can't think of a time that I've used stir locate. But because that word locate sort of evokes what you're trying to do, I see a lot of people use this one and expect it to behave like stir detect or stir match. So here's what locate is doing. It's looking through your vector once again. And now what it's giving us back, well, it looks kind of like a matrix, but we can see there's numbers here rather than strings. And we can see that the columns have names. So what stir locate's going to return to you is a data frame. A data frame with two variables, their names are start and end. And the values of those variables, well, when it doesn't find your pattern, you get an NA. When it does find your pattern, it tells you where in that element, where in that string, we can actually find that pattern. So here we can see in the third element, the pattern is the first through the fourth character of the string. And in that fourth element, well, this part doesn't match bond, we have to go all the way up to the seventh character through the tenth character to find our pattern. Now these last two, slightly different, a little less about finding where things exist. Here we have stir subset, and I think this one works the way that you would probably expect from the name. It takes that vector and narrows it down to only the elements that contain the pattern you're looking for. So here I subsetted my vector using that uh, pattern bond, and I got back bond, James Bond. And in this one, it's not yanking out the pattern from the string. It's giving you back the entire element as long as that pattern is somewhere in the element. So here we're getting not just bond, but fully James Bond. And again, whoops, that is from the last one. I apologize. This is a character vector um, containing the elements that it pulled out of the original vector. Now, last but not least, you might wish to replace or remove patterns in strings. And these are very straightforward. We have stir remove and stir replace. But notice that this is not the same as subset. This is not changing the length of your vector. What it's doing is taking out the characters that match the pattern. So here we've done stir remove of bond. And we get back, hello, my name is. Those are unaltered. This third element has not been dropped, it still exists, it's just empty because we got rid of bond and that was actually all the characters in that element. So this is still a vector of length 4 being returned, it's just containing some empty elements. And here we get just James without his last name. And of course stir replace says don't take, take it out, take it out and put something else in. So suppose I wanted to replace bond with Franco and now I get hello, my name is Franco, James Franco. Pretty straightforward. Now I want you to make sure you keep asking yourself, even with these straightforward functions, what is the class and what is the structure of this output? What could I pipe that output into and what would not accept this object structure via the pipe? And then I just briefly want to mention, I rarely use these, but sometimes they come in handy. There are these shortcut functions, stir to lower, stir to upper. There's a few others for some corner cases. And they just take your string. So now I've taken that sentence and put it just into one string. And it puts it all in lowercase or all in uppercase or whatever other nuances are out there. So these exist if you ever need those shortcuts. So as before, I'm going to ask you to do some snooping, to do some reading around the documentation. This one I won't go over the answers of. I want you to look through the string R cheat sheet. And I want you to tell me what's different about these similar functions. So length versus stir length. How are those different? Stir replace and stir replace all. This is really important. A lot of these functions that I just showed you have a variant with that all tacked on the end. 
and they do something slightly different, and as a result, they return a slightly different object structure. So give that one some thought. What's the difference between stir trim and stir trunk? Both of those involve kind of chopping things off of a string. How are they different? And now we just saw stir subset, but there's also stir sub. Sounds pretty similar. How is that different? Lastly, I'd like you to check out this stir underscore C. It's kind of similar to the just plain old C for concatenate. And what does that extra optional argument called collapse do? How does that change the output? So again, I want to recommend that you try all these out on an example string. You can use my James Bond, you can make up your own, whatever you like, and see how these functions behave. We'll be back.